Yeah, yeah, I think so. Lovely. Okay. Oh, wow. Kemi's still recording. Um, it's to audio, you know. I think she might be having technical difficulties there. Um, but welcome to everyone else that's in the space. Welcome to everyone that's come through. Shout out to the Kings for busting. And then um, Nathan, I see you up there. Do you know what I mean? Um, large up Kai. Large up Eric. Good to see you, bro. Do you know what I mean? Wow, the sun is beaming right. I can't even see my screen anymore, actually. So, um, but can you guys all see me? Can you all hear me? Is everyone is everyone connected, yeah? Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Okay. Um, who's had a good week this week? Has anyone had like a really good week that they want to share? Yeah, it's been a good week. Yeah. Learned what I needed to learn. Lost a bit, but they're all lessons. So yeah, mm. I've been grateful. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, me, I had an all right week. I started off I started off with a couple of wins on Monday and then a couple of wins on Tuesday. And then same as last week, actually, same as the week before. Monday and Tuesday, I was winning. And then Wednesday, I kind of, I won. And then I almost lost the trade. I didn't take the trade. I was looking, I was like, should I take the trade? And I, I didn't take it. And then I didn't lose. So I stayed up. And then I just didn't trade on Thursday and Friday again. Same as the week before. Do you know what I mean? So little by little, every week I'm kind of, you know, climbing up the ranks, <laughs> climbing up the, the progress, do you know what I mean? But that's the compounding thing. Anyone else? Anyone else have a good week? Anyone have a bad week? Anything happened interesting in the markets that you guys, did you guys place a single trade? What happened? Did you win? Did you lose? Anybody? I don't mind though. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I made a trade with GJ. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I knew it was going to it was gonna retrace and then go up. So I got in just before the retracement. And then so I, okay. I, I think I just, I, I did break even perhaps. I think it was that did. Anyway, I lost a few pence or whatever. But then I got back in just to get that. Maybe I shouldn't mm -hmm. have because it could have gone back down. But I knew, I think just from looking at the charts, I knew it was going to go up. That's so, yeah. yeah, I think I made about uh, seven pounds. I made two trades. I made seven pounds for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's something. Yeah, that's so <laughs> what do you mean? It's a little. That's a sick trade. Oh, what, was your, um, <laughs> what was your risk? What would you have potentially lost? Do you, do you remember? Like, was so, it like a two pound? I risk? went for. No, I didn't go that high. It was sort of like it was. I think it was. 0.05 no, no, 0.06 okay so it was like yeah nice okay yeah. nice nice yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah. cool yeah, yeah 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 that's a nice trade oh well done well done that's a good trade man uh, that's it and you're up for the week yeah and then you just have to protect your investment do you know what i mean and make sure you're careful not to lose and to manage your risk and whatever but that's it man that's a good win all right thank you uh, for sharing thanks. someone for no worries Crazy. Rosie said your, your line is breaking. Yeah, it was it was actually a bit choppy. Um, My internet's yeah, a bit, yeah. Is it? Okay, calm, 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 calm. Okay, well, we're going to talk today. What we're going to talk today is, um, in fact, before we do that, let me just ask, who's brand new in the space? Is, anyone, is this anyone's first Sunday study session? Is there anyone who's come here for the first time and you've never been to a Sunday st st uh, study session before? Anybody at all? I never have. Oh, okay. I heard that. Who is that? Was that Cassandra? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Cassandra. I've been meaning Welcome. to, but I fall asleep because it's like 10 o'clock at <laughs> night here, but I'm awake. So I was like, I what might fall asleep Where during the call, but at least I'll join. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks for joining. Yeah, exactly. Where are you? Where else are you in the world? Australia. Australia. Okay. Yeah. So middle of the night. Yeah, basically that. <laughs> You're here. Well, thank you so much for making it, man. Look at that. All the way from Australia. Did you have a good week in um, the markets last week? Did you place any trades? Or are you kind of are you new to the space? Are you new to the um to PNT entirely? You said you've been meaning to choose. No, no, no. So I guess you've been here for like a bit. No, I think I joined a, probably it's been like a year now, but I my trading is still terrible. So I blew, I blew my okay. live account this week and then I did really well in my demo afterwards. <laughs> oh, <no. Yeah. laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting. That's happened to me a lot <laughs> as well. The I've blown the live really account now. I have no money left. So now I'll do the demo yeah, yeah, and then yeah. everything went really well. But yeah, okay. I got you. All part right, of my okay. story, as Justin says. Exactly that. Exactly that. Exactly <laughs> that. Okay, cool. All right then. Um, so let me tell you a bit about who I am then, um, seeing that this is your first Sunday study session, so you get to know a bit about me and who I am and what I'm doing here, right? So 
Um, my name is Nate, and I have been in this space probably less than you, honestly. I've been in here since September, um, so under a year, and I have perhaps got a bit more free time than most. I've been self-employed before the lockdown, and in the lockdown, basically, I run events, you know, and the lockdown basically stops the events industry. So I had a lot of time to focus and study um, Forex. And because I've been studying it as much as I have, you know, I, fair enough, I'm not um, a six-figure trader. I'm not, um, I'm not that guy. Not yet, do you know what I'm saying? But basically, while I was studying, as I always like to say, um, you know, I found that while it was really, it was really helpful, but um, we had a study session with my guy, Carl, which I'm grateful for down to this day, honestly. Carl really helped with the way that he explained it because listening to Carl explain Forex just made more sense to me than anything else that I had ever heard. Do you know what I mean? Like, since I've been in the space, just listening to Carl explain it and break it down really resonated with me, right? So I was like, okay, cool. So that's what I am doing with Sunday study sessions because I thought the only thing that was missing was the consistency. So this is a space which is primarily for... Um, brand new traders. If you're an experienced trader, um, then you know obviously you're welcome here. And also, it's a study session. It's not a class. Do you know what I mean? So if you know more than me, then ch chime in and let me know. Do you know what I mean? Like if you have an, any input, you know I want to try and be as informal. I want you guys to speak. I want you to communicate. You know I, I don't really want it to be like a student teacher. I'm teaching you because I'm here learning. I'm here studying, right? And I'm trying to kind of keep up to date with my studies. And obviously doing the Sunday study sessions with you guys is really helping me to stay accountable. Oh, hey, Kemi. See, Kemi's finally made it. Hey, Kemi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Kemi's a regular, you know. Um, yeah. Woo. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> love you yeah. more. Love you yeah. more. <laughs> love you. Look at that, man. Yeah. See, I that's... mean, I'm, I'm just reinforcing what you said. Yeah, I'm in this space because I like to top up my knowledge once in a while. Just double check things. You know, that's what's up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I've got an interesting one um, lined up for you guys today. Um, what I want to talk about today is actually something called um, currency correlation that I've been kind of doing a little bit of um, research into. So I'm not going to go too, too deep into it because obviously I know we've got beginners, we've got first timers. So I'm going to start off with fundamentals. I'm going to start off with in order to help us understand currency correlation. We're going to need to understand candlesticks right so we'll spend the first half kind of like talking about what candlesticks are what they do which is something we've covered a lot on the sunday study sessions and then for the second half we'll talk about currency correlation right so that's the that's the pattern that's what we're going to go for um okay so i'm going to start from the beginning first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to share my screen first thing i'll do is i close my screen hold on hold on um I'm the host, just I'm going to share screen. Start now. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Um, so what am I going? I'm going for MetaTrader. Oh, and I am going to pick um, GBP USD because that's one of my favorite ones to show people. Oh, I did, I did leave a, a moving average in there. I forgot to take them off. I'll just get rid of that. Okay, cool. I just deleted that. Did you, you look just saw me delete that, yeah? Hold on. There you go. All right, cool. So this is the chart for GBP USD, right? So this is the Great British Pound versus the US dollar. We can see by looking at the pips, the pip counter on the right hand side, that right now one pound is worth one dollar and thirty nine cents. I was actually doing a presentation with a friend who will hopefully be joining the company soon. Do you know what I mean? On Friday, as um as price ticked from one point three eight. 999 up to 1.39000, which is, you know, quite fun to watch. Um, but obviously it's ticked up. You know, me, I've been, this is me nerding over on Forex. I was like, yes, look at it go. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> right, there you go. So basically, um, right now we're looking at the chart. Obviously the chart looks like a squiggly line, but when you zoom in, you can see that the chart is actually made up of these small blocks, right? And these small blocks are called candlesticks. So if you're not taking notes, I would recommend that you do, especially if you're new to candlesticks and you're not as confident on candlesticks as you'd like to be, right? If this is your first time hearing me explain candlesticks as well, even if it's not your first time and you kind of, you know, you've, you've taken notes, just remember, as Augustine and them always say, note takers are the money makers, you know what I mean? So obviously, if you're here and you're studying and you're focused, come in with that attitude, you come in with that mentality, right, I've come here, I'm going to learn, then you will learn, do you know what I mean? So 
brilliant, right? As you can see, um, obviously these are made up of um, blocks. This chart is made up of blocks and the blocks are called candlesticks. So if this part of the um, image is called the candlestick, then this is called the wick, yeah? So you've got the, the body of the candlestick and the wick of the candlestick or the wick of the candlestick, yeah? Cool. Um, so the upper wick and the lower wick, and then you've got the body. Now, each candlestick tells us five pieces of information, and obviously the clearer you understand those five pieces of information, then the quicker you'll be able to understand candlesticks at a glance, right? So first things first, um, is each candlestick tells you the direction that price has gone in. So um, each candlestick represents a period of time. Right now, we are looking at the monthly chart, which you can see on the top there, GBP USD MN, which refers to the fact that we look at the monthly chart. If you look at this wheel here on MetaTrader 4 or whatever trading app you use, you know, it might have a slightly different um, look about it, but you know, on this wheel here, you can see there are different time frames. Yeah. So each of these different time frames um, basically refer to refer to the size of the or the time it takes for one candlestick to form. Okay. So for example, um, on the MN, which is the one that we're looking at right now, each candlestick takes one month to form. So what does that mean? That means this is January, February, March, April, May, June, and July, which we're currently in. Yeah, obviously, um, next month we're changing season, tomorrow we're changing season, or today we're changing season, but obviously um, um, the market hasn't opened because it's the weekend. So the next candle is going to start up tomorrow because today is the first. Yeah, so um, on Monday, the next candle will start up the next monthly candle will start up and obviously that's it. Now we can figure out where do we think this month is going to go for GDP USD because we've seen where last month has gone now. Last month's candle has already told its story. That looks like a hammer to me. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, as I've always said, I'm expecting GDP USD to go down. So that's what I've been waiting for. Um, and it's throwing up hammers. <laughs> we just say it's going to go up. So, you know, in the long term, I'm not making any long trades on this because I'm not experienced enough to know what's going on, right? But here you got, like I said, each candlestick represents one month. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to make. If you look at the dummy one, if we were to change the time frame, um, then each candlestick, in fact, why not do it? Then each candlestick now represents one week. Yeah, so we can see there are four weeks in a month. So these four candlesticks were basically what happened during that one candlestick on the monthly chart, but it's still GBP USD. Yeah, it's still the same thing, but obviously it done those four things, those four weeks were what happened, right? And obviously you can, you can switch to the daily chart where each candlestick is a day and you can see obviously a week is five candlesticks, a week is five days, yeah? And in between the dotted lines is a month. So there should be 20 odd candlesticks, 22, 25, whatever, right? Depending. Um, so that's how the time frames work, essentially, right, in a nutshell. Um, are the time frames making sense to everyone? Is everyone getting the basics of the time frames? Can I get some feedback just so I know I haven't lost yes, you guys? Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm still there. Okay, brilliant. Okay, cool. Um, do we have any questions about the time frames before I move on? Yeah, everyone's got it. Cool, we did. Hey, Nate, okay. it's not, um, um, I don't know, I just wanted to know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you mentioned it before, if there's a big, if there's a gap in the time frames, what does that represent? Um, if there's a gap in the time frames, yeah, the time frame, like you a, mean a gap in the candle, a gap in the market? In the candle formation, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Um, what I understand it to mean is that there's been a lot of, movement like in the news do you know what i'm saying and that's kind of what's called like a large movement um but one thing that i have heard and i have been keeping my eye open for i can't confirm or deny but if there's a gap in the market then the market will usually come back pull back until it closes that gap and then it continues on in the direction so if for example price was going down and then there's a gap in the market because the gap the gap is usually caused by the weekend right so if okay. there's a gap in between yeah, if there's a gap in between two candlesticks, it's normally it's normally like in between the Monday and the Friday. It's not normally in between the um the, the um, week with the week run. The weekday. Because yeah. on the weekday, the candle only stops moving for about an hour and price is not very volatile during that time, right? Whereas yeah. during the weekend, 
price is still moving. The money is still moving. Do you know what I'm saying? The money's still moving. So during the weekend, when it's Friday and the candle stops moving, and then when it's Monday and the candle starts moving again, you're going to see basically what's happened gap. during the weekend. Yeah, that will that will cause a gap. That will cause a gap. But again, why that happens, I can't tell you exactly. Do you know what I mean? But that okay. will definitely, the, the market is still moving on the weekends. Um, and like I said, rumour has it, if it creates a gap, then it will come back to fill that gap before moving on. So that's something that's, as you know, worth at least keeping an eye on and seeing if that's true or not. Um, I found that to be quite interesting to watch out for. But, yeah. Okay, okay. hopefully that answered that question. Brilliant. Yeah, lovely, thanks, lovely. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Okay, so um, each candlestick gives us five pieces of information. Five pieces of information. Um, let's switch over to... This is a big one. Here we go. Let's go up a little bit. Let's go up there and let's do that. Okay, so, for example... Right? Each candle gives us five pieces of information. The first piece of information that this candle gives us is it tells you the direction that price went in whilst this candlestick was being formed. So if you see this candle on the monthly candlestick, it took one month for this candle to be formed. And while this candle was being formed, from the 1st of January to the 1st of February, yeah, whilst this candle was being formed, it went in this direction. Right, So black means the candle went down, price went down. That's what black means. A black candle means that price went down. Um, whereas conversely, a white candle means that price went up. Yeah. That's in a nutshell. I'm not gonna go too deep into different candlestick types today because <laughs> last week was a muzzle. So <laughs> I'm not gonna go too deep into that. Um, but you can see, yeah, if price goes down, then that is um, that is a black candle. If price goes up, that's a white candle. So if it goes down, then that tells us already two pieces of information, right? That it started here, it went down, and then it finished here, yeah? Or again, on the white, it started at the bottom. How do we know that it started at the bottom? Because it went up. How do we know it was up? Because it was white, yeah? So that means it definitely started at the bottom and it's gone up. And if that's the bottom, then that's the top. Yeah, so that's three pieces of information. Let's say, for example, this is 1.2, this is 1.3, this is uh, 1.4, and this is 1.5, and then you've got 1.6 or whatever, right? So you can see that price started at 1.3 and it finished at 1.4. That's two key pieces of information for you because you can be like, okay, 1.4 is a really key level. Do you know what I mean? Whenever it gets to 1.4, it always finds resistance or it always finds support or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Because you can analyze that level 1.4. Why did it stop there? How many other candles have stopped at 1.4, right? So you have that information now. You can see that candle and you can see that it has stopped at 1.4. Um, or on the other side, the white candle started at 1.4 and closed at 1.3, okay? Or wherever it closed, yeah, wherever the candle is. Like I said, it could be a monthly candle. It could be a weekly candle, it could be a daily candle, but that is a piece of information that you have. Okay, so that's three pieces of information so far. First is um, first is where price started. Second is where price finished. Third is which direction price ultimately went in. Um, oh, no, let's do it then. There you go. Third, uh, fourth, sorry, and fifth, are these wicks at the top and at the bottom. So they basically represent the high point, the high point um, that that candle reached while it was being formed and the low point that that candle reached while it was being formed. Okay, so for example, let's take this black candle. Let's take this black candle, for example. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna do that, this black candle, but I'll do it um, its whole life, its lifespan. So it started here. That's where it started, yeah? And then at first, it went up. It was a white candle. And then it changed its mind, boom, and went down. But it left a wick to say, I was here. You see it? See it, yeah? So it's gone, it's changed, it's left a wick, and it's gone all the way down, bang, to the bottom, right? And now it's a big black candle, right? Cool. But then it's pulled back again. It's pulled back to about here. Right, still a black candle, but it's pulled back to it, and it's left another wick to say, I was here. That is the candle. See that that candle there is that candle there. That's what happened, right? So 
these are the four pieces of information that we're given. Hold on. These are the four pieces, of, the five pieces of information, sorry, that we're given. Um, we know that price, if this is a black candle or a red candle, started at the top, went up this high, went down this low, and finished at the bottom. Ultimately, price went downwards. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five pieces of information that each candle gives us. Or again, on the white side, you know, it's the opposite, right? Started at the bottom, went down to the bottom of the wick, went up to the top of the wick and pulled back to the top of the candle. Or, you know, it could have done it in the other way around. It could have started at the bottom and gone all the way up to the top first, then gone all the way down to the bottom and then gone all the way back up to the, to the top of the thing. It's not likely, it's not common. I haven't seen it happen much, but then I don't watch the candles like that. Do you know what I mean? So maybe it does, right? But either way, I think it's more likely to, to you know, say it started at the bottom, it went down, then it's gone up to the top, then it's pulled back, and that's the end of the candle. That seems to me to be the general movement of candles. And that that movement there, that um, bottom of the body, bottom of the wick, top of the wick, top of the body, bottom of the body, bottom of the wick, top of the wick, top of the body, that movement there is basically a trend. That is what a trend looks like. Yeah, so that movement there is basically what you're seeing while the candle is being formed. Yeah, the, on the on the larger time frame, you know what I'm saying. You're seeing the you're seeing the wicks, you're seeing the wicks being formed um, on the candles. Okay, so let's look at it in real time. Um, and get the picture a little bit more. Um, well, no, to be honest, I think we get the picture. I think we get the picture. So, well, let me ask. Actually, do you guys do you guys feel like you understand candlesticks any better than than when we first started? Is there anyone who's kind of picked up anything on the subject of candlesticks? Let's just start off there. Yeah, pretty five pieces of information. Couple of people picked up on that. Okay, brilliant. Is there anyone who's still feeling a little bit confused about candlesticks, about what candlesticks are, about what information they give, about like you know what they, yeah, what how they help us to to see the chart at a glance? Yeah, lovely, brilliant. Let's look at some of these candlesticks at a glance. Then come on. So we can see here that this is a downward trend. For example, this is a downward trend, right? Um, we could tell it's a downward trend because obviously it starts at the top and finishes at the bottom. If it started at the bottom and finished at the top and it was constant movement, that would be an upward trend, right? Um, if the market was not going in any one specific direction, that would probably be either consolidation or it would be bouncing between a range, right? Those are the three things that the market generally tends to do. It will either range, like it is here at the bottom, um, or it will trend as it is at the end, or as it is here in the middle, right? Um, so we can see, like I said, at a glance, all of these black candles, boom. We can see that some of these black candles are much bigger than others, yeah? And these big candles, what they do is they indicate, obviously, like how many sellers there are in the market. There's a lot of sellers in the market. It's a big push, there's a big drop. That's what these, that's what these large candles tend to do. Yeah, and obviously at, at a glance, you can see which way the market is moving. You can kind of get like a, a, a clear picture. Look, here we've got a nice gap in the market in between these two months. You can see there's like a big jump from A to B. You know, you're probably going to see it more so on the monthly candles from, from my understanding than you would on maybe the minute 15. Do you know what I mean? On the minute 15, it might be a bit more um, tight, I would guess. But then I don't really look at the minute 15 much. To be honest. I, see, I do see it on the month often. Um, just like little gaps, you know, nothing too big. But okay, um, so let me forward to the point. Where was I going? Let me get my um. Oh, come back here. There we go. Okay, candlesticks, time frames, currency correlation. Boom. Use USD, which went down last year. Okay, so basically, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a look at one example of currency correlation. Um, there are major and minor currency pairs. Okay, so. Some of the major currency pairs, or not some of, but the major currency pairs, Euro USD, GBP USD, USD JPY, USD Chef, USD CAD, um, AUD USD, NZD USD, right? So what that means is, if we go through some of these and we go down to EURMXN, yeah, um, that is not a major currency pair. Yeah, there are major currency pairs, there are minor currency pairs, um, I believe they're referred to. And then I think there's another one. I think they're like tropical or something like that, if I've got that right. Um, 
and you know they're like you know countries that are kind of out there but there's a lot of different kinds of currency pairs there are only a few major currency pairs so when we're looking at correlation it's the major ones that we're going to be talking about today okay um so i want to obviously focus on usd because that's the easiest one to read right it's the easiest one to read it's the easiest one and usd is the most traded currency out of all of them because it is a major currency and it's in most major currency pairs do you know what i mean usd 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 it's in all of them <laughs> we'll talk about most do you know what i mean it's in every single major currency pair has usd in it right cool so if you can follow the direction that the us dollar is going in then it might make your trading a lot easier um and that is something that we can do by the way that is something that we can do um and that is the tip and trick that I want to share with you guys today. So let's start off by looking at um, Euro USD, which is number two. And we'll look at the um, monthly view, shall we? Oh, no, actually, I know what's going on with this. Hold on. Let's go to GU first. <laughs> no, no, let's stick with, oh, wrong one. Let's stick with Euro USD. Okay, cool. Um, so, what has Euro USD been doing, say, for the past? year do you know what i mean say for the past year right what has euro usd been doing now obviously this year it seems to be in a bit of a range um let me get my pen out there you go seems to be in a bit of a range it started at the top it's come down to the bottom then it's gone back up to the top again see it um and now it's come back and it's touched the bottom here again and it's left us um look at the candle the last candle of this month you know that candle there suggests that now we're on our way back up right? Maybe, maybe, you know, who knows? I think it might even come down and touch this, this trend line that it's been bouncing off of and then go up. That's what I've been waiting for, but who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. So, you know, that's what I said, but that there tells me that I might have missed the touch that I was looking for because I thought it was coming down here. Um, or maybe it'll come this month. I don't know, right? Watch the space. But my point being, what has it been doing for the last year? Okay. Euro USD. It's been going that way. For the last year what does that mean so if you're thinking euro usd okay so remember you've got two currencies in a currency pair you've got a base currency and you've got a quote currency okay so the base currency is always worth one of itself and the quote currency is the currency where the price is being represented on the right hand side which is currently 1.18728 over here in the blue Okay, so the base currency, which in this instance is euro, base is first, quote is second, right? So euro USD means one euro is worth how many US dollars? Well, one euro is worth one dollar and eighteen cents. One euro is worth one dollar and eighteen cents. Yeah, that's what you're seeing here in that blue box. But down to the very smallest pipette, it's actually one point one eight seven two eight, right? Not too important for what we're talking about right now but you can see that it's $1.18, okay? So what that means is, if one euro is worth $1.18, okay, I need, I need someone to answer this for me, okay? So if one euro is worth $1.18 and one euro becomes more valuable, will one euro be worth $1.50 or will one euro be worth $1.0? If one dollar becomes more valuable, if one dollar becomes more valuable, will one euro be worth one dollar and fifty or be worth one dollar and zero? And dollar and zero. Sorry, say that again for me. Think of it as a pound. Think of it as a pound. One pound is worth one dollar and twenty cents. One pound is worth one dollar and twenty cents. Okay. So if one pound was worth one dollar and fifty cents, or one pound was worth one dollar and zero cents, which one is the dollar more valuable in? If one pound is worth one dollar and fifty cents, or one pound is worth one dollar and zero cents. One dollar and zero cents. One dollar and zero cents. One pound is more valuable. 
one pound is less valuable, sorry, one dollar is more valuable. Yeah, the dollar is stronger. The dollar is stronger. Yeah, so if the dollar gets stronger, the chart is going to go this way. If the dollar gets stronger, the chart is going to go this way. Because one pound or one euro, sorry, I know, I know I was bugging, <laughs> or one euro is um, not going to be worth as many dollars because the dollar is now stronger. If the dollar gets weaker, then one euro is going to be worth more dollars. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, cool. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you repeat that, Nat, please? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. So if, um, if the dollar gets stronger, if the dollar gets stronger, yeah. then one euro is going to be worth less dollars. One euro is going to be worth less dollars. So this chart will go down. One euro will be worth less dollars because the dollar is now stronger. The dollar can hold its own. One dollar is now worth one euro. Do you know okay. what I mean? Whereas yeah. if, the, if the dollar is weak, if the dollar is weak, yeah, then one euro is going to be worth more dollars. One one euro can get you one dollar and fifty cents. Do you know what I mean? Because the dollar is weak, the dollar is not va that valuable. Yeah. So one dollar is going to get you. Think of it as um. Let me zoom out a little bit. Think of it bigger. Think of it as two. You can't even see two on this. Right, think of it as one, one dollar or two dollars. Imagine that was a two, yeah? So if one euro is worth one dollar or if one euro is worth two dollars, you can see, do you know what I mean? The, the value of the dollar has gone up or down. You can see, right? Because, okay, look, one, one dollar is, it was worth, okay, actually one dollar was, uh, one euro, sorry. I am actually, that was my bad, I'm bugging. One euro was actually worth one dollar fifty-eight. And now one euro is worth one dollar eighteen. Do you know what I mean? Let's look at a couple more examples. That might help because that's what we're going to be doing today anyway. We're talking about cross correlation, right? So what's the point in doing that if we can't make it make sense with other time frames, with other um, currencies? So what have we seen here? We've seen that last year, right? We're going to go for twenty twenty. We've seen that last year it went in this direction. Yeah, it's gone up primarily. It started down here, it finished up here, and then it's been in a bit of a range this year. Cool. Um, that's Euro USD. So what that means is the USD is the second currency in this currency pair. I'm going to swap to another currency pair underneath Euro USD, GBP USD. Okay, so what has GBP USD been doing for the past year? Well, it's been doing the same thing. And in this year, it seems to be in a bit of a, uh, but you know, it's still kind of got its, um, still kind of got itself together. But, you know, as you can see, the last year, at the very least, the last year, there was a correlation. Yeah, you guys can see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure? Okay, lovely. The last year, there was a correlation. So this is now pound USD. Okay, this is now pound USD. So one pound was worth uh, $1.2. Now one pound is worth $1.3. Yeah, so one of two things is happening here. Either the pound is becoming more valuable or the dollar is becoming less valuable. Is that relatively simple? Yeah. Just difficult to remember, yeah? But it is, it's very easy to understand, right? Yeah, everyone? Yeah. <laughs> you guys getting it? You guys, you guys following what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm getting it now. Yeah, lovely. Anyone else? Anyone else following? Following, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah following. Yeah. Okay, okay good, following. good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Nate, yes. Nate, would that mean that yeah. the dollar is becoming more valuable then? No, weaker. It would mean the dollar is becoming weaker. I mean, the dollar over the last year, the dollar has become weaker because uh, one pound, 
was worth $1.20 and now one pound, the same one pound can get you $1.40. Do you know what I mean? The same uh, one pound can now buy you more dollars because obviously the dollar is worth less than it was this time last year. The dollar is worth less. Yeah. It's going, the dollar, the value of the dollar is going that way. And we can see it because we've looked at two different currency pairs which both tell us the same thing. Yeah. Here's why I here's why I went the long way around about showing you though, right? Because if you look at this, you will see that in some currency pairs, USD is the quote, and in some currency pairs, USD is the base. Let's look at one of those where USD is the base. Um, so we want USD, which is going to be down in U, and we want a major one. So oh, USD JPY. I think here we go. USD JPY. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So what was it doing over the last year? We're not looking at this year, we're looking at last year, remember? Because this year, it seems to be a bit more, um, do you know Down. what I mean? It's a downtrend. Giving us a bit of a bounce. But we can see last year, it was going down. So how does that make sense? What does that tell us about the value of the US dollar? One US dollar was worth 111 Japanese yen, now, one US dollar is worth 103 Japanese yen. What does that tell is us about the stronger? value of the US dollar? It doesn't. It tells us the value of the, well, the it value is, of it's going down. Yeah, it's going down. Year, the value of the US dollar was going down. Yeah, there you have it. That is it, right? So if you can track the value of the US dollar, that's really going to help you, right? Whatever currency, whatever major currency you're looking at, the, knowing the value or, or having an idea which direction the US dollar is going in is going to help you plan your trades going forward throughout the rest of the year, yeah? If you're like, okay, I think this year, because remember, we're investors, yeah? We're thinking long-term, we're thinking about, you know, building, we're thinking about growing our accounts, we're thinking about not blowing our accounts. Do you know what I'm saying? We're thinking long-term, Yeah. Um, so if you're thinking, all right, cool, I think this year, this is what I'm expecting the dollar to do, and it starts doing it, or you can be like, dollar's been doing this all year, and here we are in July, the middle of the year, what do I think it's going to carry on doing? Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to show you a little trick that, um, that Carl showed me, and it is, well, it's not a trick, <laughs> it's a chart, and the chart is called the dollar axis, the dollar index. Uh, this one right here. DXA, right? So if you don't have this, how do you get DXA? Um, you press this plus button here, up there, right? Um, and you find it, you find it, the DXA, it's one of the indexes. What is the DXA? The DXA, D stands for dollar, X stands for index, yeah? So you should find it under the indexes. D stands for dollar, X stands for index. So the dollar index is basically um, like a, correlation of all of the dollars together do you know what i mean like how how valuable is the dollar that's what the dollar index is right to my understanding and here we go we can see that last year the dollar dropped in value period the dollar versus the dollar it's not the dollar versus anything yeah last year the dollar dropped in value we can see that we can also zoom out and we can track what's been going on with the dollar with the dollar alone do you know what i'm saying what's been happening with this dollar yeah and we can see it do its thing um and yeah, and we can keep we can keep an eye on the dollar. Once we have an idea of what the dollar is doing, as I said, over the long term, that's going to help us to place more effective trades. Do you guys agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that a handy? Is that a handy tool? Yes, it is. Very handy. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Do you know what the pound right. version is? I don't actually. Is there one? I have no idea. That's what I was just wondering. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't think so. I've never, I've never heard of like a pound index. Um, I mean, it might be out there, but I haven't, I haven't, I've been, you know, walking. <laughs> I've been walking with a dollar index for a second. But um, yeah, I've not heard of that actually. And it would be cool if there was. But I know, like I said, that the dollar is in every single currency, is in every single major currency pair. You know, so the dollar is, the dollar gets, definitely gets special treatment. Um, comes and does its thing. You know, so it's, it's definitely important. It's, there are a lot of, there are a lot of traders who actually trade the dollar index, which you can do. You can buy and sell on the dollar index and invest in the value of the dollar. If you think the dollar is going to go up, or if you think the dollar is going to go down, that is something that you can do. Um, 
But yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show you guys today, actually. We finished a little bit early. We covered candlesticks, basics, fundamentals. Um, we've covered currency correlation, which is what I wanted to show you. Um, do you know what? Justin, you asked a good question, right? It is worth noting. Um, I did I did only prepare to kind of show you guys the um, dollar one today, but it is worth noting that the pound does correlate. Do you know what I'm saying? It does. Like all of the different currencies that, like if the pound is going down, the pound is going down. If the, if the Swiss franc is going down, the Swiss franc is going down. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you're following it and you're monitoring it, you're keeping your eyes on it, um, then you'll be able to spot it when it happens, you know, or if it's going up, it's going up, you'll be able to see it. But yeah, that definitely comes with keeping an eye on and studying your currency. So if there's one bit of advice that I received that I would always want to pass on to absolutely anybody who was starting trading, then it would be to pick one currency pair and to marry it. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many times you blow your account. It doesn't matter how long it takes for you to, to get there. Pick one currency pair, marry that currency pair and study it, study it, study it, study it, study it, study it. Do you know what I mean? Until you and that one currency pair, you know when it's going to the toilet. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what that currency pair is going to do. You know you're all over it, right? Um, that's your currency pair. That is the best advice that I've received. And that's the best advice that I would give. That advice there has led me to more withdrawals than, you know, anything else that I've done so far. You know, it's, um, it's saved me from blown accounts, you know, because that was definitely something that I was struggling with when I first started, for sure. You know, I, I basically just dashed all of the money I had in and said goodbye to the lot of it, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, definitely, like, take time. You know, you don't need to rush through this process. Investment is a very, very, very long game. Um, take time, learn, study, do you know what I mean? Understand it. Keep educating yourself. So the Sunday study sessions, as I always say, are, um, are like a bit of an interim session. They're here for us. They're here for us to kind of come in together and study and learn and, and, you know, and connect and build community. But it really is important. It really is important to me that you guys don't solely rely on these Sunday study sessions because as dope as I know they are, um, you know, they are not, they're not like an official thing. This is just something that I'm doing. Uh, myself, Albert, um, and others, you know, and Justin have kind of come together and put together just to help you guys. That's it. Yeah. So, like, really, I would say that you don't rely on it too much. You, If you want to actually learn how to trade, then, you know, that's what we are paying for. We're paying for WoW. Yeah. If you're paying for WoW and you're not using WoW, then you are playing yourself. Right. Don't do that. That is called hustling backwards. And that is a silly thing to do. Um, so definitely, you know, make sure you're using the videos on WoW. Make sure you're studying, make sure you're working, make sure you're receiving the information. It's great that you're here and I'm, I'm grateful for everybody that comes through to these sessions. Like I said, studying with you guys helps me to stay accountable, helps me to stay focused. And hopefully you guys pick up some gems on the way. I love these sessions. I really do. I really enjoy them. Um, even if I'm out like I am today, I still want to make them and I still want to kind of share them. I actually do have a couple of weeks where I'm not going to be able to make it. So I'm going to reach out and see if I can get Albert and Carl to help me out um because i do have a couple of weeks coming up where i'm doing some driving work for my friends um, catering company so i'm literally going to be off the radar if they can't then they just won't really sunday study session but i'm sure they'll be able to cover it because um you know yeah we've got a good team um anyway before i go off on a whole tangent i'm just sitting here rambling which i can do um let me come back and do the eye contact thing see how everyone's feeling how's everyone feeling Has anyone got any questions um other than the questions I've already been asked on the subject of currency correlation. Is there anything that anyone would like to know? Is there anything that was said that you kind of want a bit more information on? Um, let me know. Yeah, Nate, can you can you quickly just go back to the um, Forex majors just so I can screenshot that quick? Yeah, same. Hold on. Thank you. Yeah, come, come, come. Hold on. Forex majors, there you go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, That's no worries. One. Yeah, and to make sure I had that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of information on um, on on those, but like I said, they're the best ones to trade because the forex majors are kind of like the most stable currency pairs because the most people are in there, they get the most investment, they get the most support. You know, sometimes the um the I think they're called exotics or something like that. They can be like really 
really volatile and really random for no reason. Do you know what I mean? You just kind of spike up and down and, and move weird and move in different ways. But every single currency pair has a very different energy behind it, which is why I think it's such a good idea to pick one currency pair and stick with it. Do you know what I mean? Just stick with it, study it, study it to death. Literally every single week, right? What, what have you done this week? What have you done this week? What have you done this week? You know, if you can't discipline yourself and stick it out, then investing is not for you. Do you know what I mean? And investing is for you because you're here. So just stick it out. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just pick one and deep it and just literally do everything you can to understand that one currency pair. It's not that complicated, but it's not easy. It definitely takes discipline. It definitely takes patience. You know, there's going to be times when you know you shouldn't have jumped into a trade and you still jumped into that trade. It was your own mistake. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you have to just hold the L and let the money go. Do you know what I mean? You're learning a skill set that's going to last you for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? So good luck to everybody. Thank you so much for coming through to the Sunday study session, as always. I definitely appreciate you guys. Um, one more round for anyone who has any questions. Anyone got anything they want to ask? No? Okay, can I get some noise for the session? Did anyone get some value today? Pure anyone value. Thank cool? you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely hearts. guys. Thanks, Nat. Thank yeah, you very up, much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. One more thing, actually, before I before it's I forget brilliant. to mention that Justin that Justin mentioned to me um, the other day. Um, so on shift, don't forget that there is now a new shiftpedia, a new shiftpedia section. So if you've heard any words today, any terminology that you don't really understand, any words that kind of haven't um, you know, you're like, what, what What? does that word mean? You know, there's actually a Shiftpedia now on Shift, um, which can break down all of the terminology for you. So definitely check that out as well. Um, but other than that, I'm going to continue on with my day, guys. Thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and I'll see you next week, yeah? Thanks, Nick. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.